Jesus is setting up individual Christians and the church to grow. He's accomplishing this through giving special gifts to the church. And these gifts are actually people, according to our theme verses of Ephesians 4 verses 11 and 12, which say, So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for works of service, so that the body of Christ may be built up.
So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. Jesus himself is the embodiment of all five of these gifts. He's the perfect apostle, perfect prophet, the perfect evangelist, the perfect shepherd, and the teacher that we should all follow and emulate. Now, Jesus has given each one of these gifts to every Christian. Each one of us can find one of these things in us, but one of these always rises to the top. Last week, we learned that there is the apostle, the founder. The apostle means sent one, one who is sent specifically to start something new on behalf of God a new congregation, perhaps, a new ministry area, a new program, maybe a new contact. They proclaim the truth of Jesus in order to establish something, and then they set up systems so that people will continue to grow, and then the apostle moves on to the next new thing that God is guiding them to. Now today, we're going to learn about the prophet. And what do you think of when you hear the word prophet? Sometimes we think of the crazy loud guy shouting from a corner that the end is near. Perhaps we think of one who is always bringing bad news. 
Well, in the Greek word prophet, or the Greek word that's translated in the English prophet is prophetes, one who speaks forth or speaks openly. And more to the Bible point, one who proclaims the divine message. Then in the Old Testament, we have a Hebrew word, nevi, and that means a spokesperson or a speaker. And more to the Bible point, one who speaks God's words or on behalf of God for a specific message to a specific people. The word prophet is very important in the Bible. In fact, it is used 800 times in the Bible, 150 of those occasions in the New Testament. The prophet is part of the foundation of the church. In Ephesians chapter 2, verses 19 to 21, we read, Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household, built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. The prophets in the Bible were also part of the author list of the Bible. They were people specifically chosen and equipped by God to give his message and then record that message for us today. Most of the time, the messages from God were for people, for God's people, I should say, whether the Old Testament Israelites and then later to the New Testament Christians. But at times, God sent prophets on special missions to other nations and peoples. And one of the ideas that we get from that is Jonah, who was sent to Nineveh to preach to the Ninevites of Assyria. Now, like the original apostles, who were the 12 apostles and Paul, the prophets of the Bible are no longer with us. God has neither replaced them. There is no more new revelation from God. The Bible is complete, and the message we have from God is enough for our salvation and for our growth in life and in the church. The message of the prophet almost always consists of both bad news and good news. Bad news regarding people's disobedience, and always comes with a warning about the coming negative effects of staying in a sinful life. But this is followed by good news of God's mercy and grace that can be experienced when one turns away from their own sinful ways and then turns to God's way of life and thinking. The message of the prophet is always consistent with what God has revealed in the Bible before. Even when new information is introduced, we can always compare it to what God has said before and find it to all match together. This information was always regarding holiness, sin, right and wrong, evil and good, justice and injustice. The prophet also spoke into the context in which they found themselves. They were actually contemporary. Sometimes we think of prophets as, as being always old school, but they were the most contemporary. They used modern creative means to communicate God's message to the, to the audience in a way their audience would understand. Therefore, supernatural discernment of their audience was high in the toolbox of the prophet. And this wasn't just about teaching information. Rather, there was always a call to action consistent with the teaching. When the prophet preached, they always called people to repent, to believe, to obey. We have this example from John the Baptist in Matthew chapter 3, beginning with verse 7. But when John saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to where he was baptizing, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce fruit in keeping with repentance, and do not think you can say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. I tell you that out of these stones, God can raise up eight children for Abraham. The axe is already at the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. So we have John calling out sinful actions and sinful attitudes. He's giving stern warnings of the coming consequences if people do not change their thinking and do not change their ways. Yet ultimately, according to John 1 verse 29, John also announces the good news of Jesus Christ, the one and only true Savior of the world. And we read this, the next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, 
the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Prophets are people driven by passion, a passion for God and a passion for God's word, which leads to a passion for the truth. They are impassioned and make impassioned calls for people to follow God's truth and fulfill his will, individuals and the church. Hey folks, Rodney here, youth ministry leader here at Abundant Life Baptist Church. Uh, you ever wonder uh, what the mindset of the prophets were and the apostles uh, when you consider uh, all the struggles they faced and the adversity they faced? Well, the interesting thing about it when you really look at it is none of these men came out of the womb prepared, save one or two over the through the entire Bible. But God prepared them. He called them and prepared them for that call. And sometimes it was a long process. Sometimes it was a slow process. I look at my uh, my favorite prophet in the Old Testament, and that's the minor prophet known as Amos. Grew up in a little dusty area, that the same place where King David came from. And um, he was completely out of place where God sent him and was not a prophet to be. In fact, my favorite line, my favorite uh, verses in that book, I'm going to read them to you, and that's out of Amos chapter 7, verses uh, 14 and 15. Uh, this is after Amaziah was trying to set him up to get uh, whatever, thrown in prison, killed, whatever it was, and basically wanted him to, you know, kick rocks, take off, and go over to, over to Judah, eat their bread, and, and tell them your prophecy because we don't want it here, right? And you know, this is a supposed priest turning away a prophet of God. And Amos's response was quite quite profound, and it was this, these simple statements. I was no prophet, nor was I the son of a prophet, but I was a sheep herder, and I was a tender sycamore fruit. Then the Lord took me as I followed the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go and prophesy to my people Israel. So he dropped what he was doing and he went and prophesied. He went and delivered a message, a harsh message, and a hard message to deliver to a bunch of people that didn't want to hear it. And the sad thing is, is the supposed people of God didn't want to hear it. Sound familiar? I think there's a, a fellow by the name of John that went through a very similar uh, thing. Uh, kind of didn't end well here for him, but it didn't matter because he just got promoted. Um, but yeah, think about that one statement when we hear it. The voice of one crying in the wilderness. Now we hear it earlier on in the Old Testament, but we hear it from, from John the Baptist's mouth. And um, really in a way that's who we are to be, um, especially if you've been blessed with the gift of prophecy, right? That means that you hold fast to the Word of God and you're willing to endure um, rejection for it. Even if that rejection comes from the people who should be the ones wanting to hear it. And I, I'd like to, you know, struggle with it, but I, that's okay. That's okay. Because those men, when they were called, decided that it was more important to love God than fear men. And that's what it means. And that's really what it means to be a Christian. But I guess some of us are, are we're all gifted in different ways. And some of us um, have no, you know, we all have a part to play in this. But uh, those who are gifted with that, and those who are called as prophets, those who are gifted with the gift of prophecy, prophecy now, um, they have to stand on it. We, we don't, I don't have a choice. I don't have a choice but to love God so much that I hold fast to his word, and I will teach when I can, and I will encourage when I can, and I will rebuke when I must. And it will all be seasoned with grace and mercy as best as I can in this, in this flesh that is wrapped around my soul. And that's what these men did. And it's so important. It, it's so important to make sure that no matter what we do, no matter what our list consists of, that God's at the top of it. And that's what these men would do. And that's what we should do as Christians. Not should. This is what we must do as Christians. 
because it doesn't matter what the world can do to us. It doesn't matter what men can do to us. We're renters, you know, and when the lease is up, we have a better place to go to. Uh, but until then, we need to share that truth with as many people as we can in whatever ways we're gifted in it, because not everybody's able to just stand there and do it, you know, but that's okay because God gave you a purpose and a way and a gift to do it. Uh, for me, he gave me a big mouth, right? And, and, and a, a good set of shoulders so I can take it. Um, that might not be for you, but that's what these men did. These prophets were, were called and they, they faced the adversity, even again, even from their peers, but didn't matter because it was more important to love God more than they feared man. And so I ask you today, do you, or will you love God more than you fear men? I ask this of the youth all the time and, um, that is the only way we can live as Christians. The function of the prophet continues today in Jesus Christ Church. Jesus has set up the church to have those who speak forth the truth and help keep us on a straight path. Now, last week we compared the apostle to a construction expert, an expert in laying foundations. The prophet can also fit into a construction category as Jesus builds up his church. They're the one that ensures the foundation and everything built on it stays straight, level, square, and according to plan. Now, how do we identify this prophet gift? How do we identify it in ourselves? And how do we identify it in others? And how do you know that God has called you to this particular function? Well, there's a few questions that we can ask ourselves or we can ask as we look at others as they grow in their faith. The first question is, do you see specific words and messages from God in the Bible? Themes that just jump out to you as vital for you and for others around you? The prophet hears and speaks specific words from God to other people. And as the prophet matures, they learn how to equip others to hear God's voice, obey his leading, and help others find the correct way and leave their old way of living. Another question could be this. Do you not just see problems and have a desire to call them out? Because, of course, that's what a prophet does. But are you passionate about leading people to live by the truth of God and to build their lives and the church or, or the ministry according to God's way. Is that your passion? Because the prophet is much more than a mouthpiece for God. He or she is someone who helps the people of God hear God's voice from the Bible and then obey it. Another question we should ask is, do you tend to think, speak, and live differently from the world, and even think, speak, and live differently from other Christians? The prophet often chooses to live apart from the world in some way and preaches the message of repentance with compelling passion. And often this will set this person apart, not just from the world, but perhaps from other Christians. Because frankly, for people of God being called out by prophets, that sometimes is a little difficult and it's sometimes hard to understand them. But this is what God has called the prophet to be and to do. And another question to suggest, do you have this guidance from the Holy Spirit, this special discernment from God regarding people and situations? And now we have to remember something. This discernment and this message from God must always align with the Bible, and it should be obvious that it's aligning with the Bible. When you study the Old Testament prophets, for instance, they have a lot of messages, and sometimes those messages come out uh, very strongly, and, and, and it's almost shocking, and you go, well, where did this come from? But if you look back to the original law that God presented in the first five books of the Bible, you realize that these prophets were calling out people and presenting calls for repentance and admonishment and even encouragement that God had already given. It's just that the prophet will use a contemporary, more modern and compelling way to present this message. 
but there's also this discernment that they have in their toolbox. This, this God-given, spirit-driven, and spirit-equipped uh, ability to just know the difference between right and wrong or to know what's happening. And maybe you've experienced that yourself. When I first started here at Abundant Life Baptist Church, I went out to uh, uh, have coffee with someone who is a relative of one of our church members. They're not part of the church, but this elderly gentleman is one of the most kind and gentle people you could ever meet. And we spent some time sharing that uh, uh, coffee and that dessert and just talking about different things, about his life, my life, things we're doing now, things that have happened to us, family and everything like that. What I didn't share with him was what was going on in my head at the time. I was a brand new pastor here at Abundant Life. Uh, there was so much to do, so much to learn. I just wasn't sure of a lot of things. I just moved into my house. Everything is uncertain. And I have to admit, uh, which I didn't admit to him, I admit to you now, that I was quite worried and I was quite distracted and bothered and I was having trouble getting things going simply because of everything rolling around in my head. But I didn't share that with him. We just had a lot of good small talk. At the end of our time together, he asked if he could pray for me. Well, I will never say no to someone praying for me. Now remember, I haven't shared what was going on in my head and heart at the time. So he laid his hands on me. That's very special, by the way. And then he began to pray. But you know what he prayed for? He prayed specifically for the things that were rolling around in my head and my heart, things that I had not shared with him. Yet he prayed that God would work in my life, work in my mind, work in my heart and ministry and family on these specific things, things I had not shared with him. This is a key example of the prophet's discernment and the prophet's work. And after he had finished praying, he encouraged me to deal with the things that were going on in my head and my heart in a way that was consistent with the Bible and showing my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. The person who is exercising their Christ-given gift as a prophet may be seen as somewhat strange or even offensive to other people, even to other Christians. And eventually that person may be isolated or at least feel isolated simply because they think and they speak in a way which is distinct from everyone else. And also there's the fact that they call out error, they call out sin, and they press passionately for people to align their lives with Jesus Christ's will. And frankly, if we're honest with ourselves, we don't like to be called out on things like that. It makes us uncomfortable when someone sees something in our life that we're trying to hide and then they expose it. Even if it's just to us in private and in a, in a confidential way, it feels very uncomfortable. But let's remember that person and the gifting that they have have been set up by Jesus. This is part of Jesus Christ's plan for his church and even more so, it's part of Jesus Christ's plan for my life and part of Jesus Christ's plan for your life. If you are confronted by the prophet, then you need to listen. And if you are the prophet, you need to speak forth with boldness and with care, remembering you're speaking the words of God with the call for people to repent and change their ways. Now, to those who have been called and equipped by God to be prophets, Listen to this teaching from Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 4 and 5. Anyone who speaks in a tongue edifies themselves, but the one who prophesies or speaks forth the word of God edifies the church. I would like every one of you to speak in tongues, but I would rather you have you prophesy. The one who prophesies the word of God is greater than the one who speaks in tongues unless somebody interprets so that the church may be edified. Remember, the purpose of God setting up these people in these places with these gifts is that the church would be built up. God wants, Jesus Christ wants to build his church. He wants to edify his church. He wants individual Christians to grow in the gifts and the truth and the knowledge that they have and then live according to that truth and according to that knowledge. But this also applies to the entire congregation or to the program or the ministry. 
not only are the individuals who are part of that to live according to the truth and speak according to the truth as presented in the Bible, God has also called them to grow in their ministry, in their congregation, in their group, and to encourage one another. And the prophet has a very important part in that, in that they speak the truth from the Bible into people's lives, both individually and as a group. So that's for the person who is equipped and called to be a prophet, a gift to the church. Now, what of us who are listening to the prophet? When someone speaks to us, what should happen with that? Well, we look at the Bible in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 19 to 22. In this teaching, Paul gives us some rapid-fire teaching, but the implications of these short words are huge for us. 1 Thessalonians 5, 19 says this, Do not quench the Spirit. Remember, from the Holy Spirit, we receive power, we receive truth, and we receive wisdom. We're able to live like Christians and think like Christians because of the Holy Spirit. And since the Holy Spirit is sometimes described as a fire, we're not supposed to be throwing water on him and quenching him. We need to let him do his work. And part of that work is through the words of prophets. And so Paul goes on in verse 20 of 1 Thessalonians 5, do not treat prophecies with contempt. In other words, when someone speaks the truth to us, we first of all should never ignore. We must listen to it. Secondly, we must never consider that the person giving this message is someone less than us or does not have any power or authority to say what they're saying. Even, we should not even be questioning the manner in which they speak. They may very well be speaking with a tone that God has called them to speak. And of course, they always have to speak from the Bible. And that's where we get to verse 21. Do not quench the spirit. Do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Test. This word test means to prove that it is authentic. It's just like taking metal and heating it up. And if that metal just melts away and boil, almost boils away, we know that it's not good metal. We know it has a lot of impurities and it's not what's intended. But if a gold ring is put into the fire and comes out shiny and stronger, that means it is authentic. Well, the same comes with the prophecy. When someone gives us a teaching from the Bible, when someone encourages us to go in this particular way, or, or when someone says we're not following the way and we need to correct ourselves, we need to go to the Bible, which is the source of the Word of God, and we need to go to the Holy Spirit, who gives us wisdom to understand the Bible, and then we take the words of this prophet or the person speaking the Word of God, we compare it all together. And if it all lines up, if what they are saying is true, and this includes, for instance, if we're called out about sin, and we, then we have to honestly look at ourselves. We have to honestly evaluate ourselves, maybe bring someone else in and say, please help me see if I'm doing something wrong here. And if it all lines up, then we know that the word that was spoken to us is true, and then we must live according to that. So Paul goes on, and I'll read the whole passage so we get the whole context of this. First, do not quench the Spirit. Secondly, do not treat prophecies with contempt. Third, but test them all. Hold on to what is good. Reject every kind of evil. Test them all. Hold on to what is good and reject every type of evil. When we have been given the Word of God, we take what is good, what is positive, what is beneficial, and then we apply it to our lives. We apply it to our work, whether in the church or outside the church. We apply it to our relationships. We apply it to our families. We apply it to even the small things we do. That which is good is revealed in the Bible. The prophets help us understand what is good, and then they push us towards living that way but we are also to reject every kind of evil. Evil and impurity and that which is not holy should never be a part of our thinking, our speaking, or our actions. And the prophet also indicates what is evil and helps us reject all that evil so that we can truly live a life which honors and blesses Jesus Christ.
If you've been hearing these messages and you're wondering what in the world were going on, who Jesus is and, and who the Holy Spirit really is and what these messages from the Bible and prophets all mean, if you know that you truly don't have faith in Jesus Christ and you know that you're just sort of hoping that you'll make it in the end and hoping you'll have a positive change in your life, but you have no clue how to have that change. And if you know that really you're being guided by your pride and selfishness and the way things work in the world, then why don't you contact us? And we've given you many ways to contact us. We would love to share with you the truth of Jesus Christ so that you can believe in Jesus Christ and experience this radical change of life from living the way we want to live, which is against God, to turning around completely and following God's way. Now, if you believe in Jesus Christ and you're hearing these words and you're realizing, I am not following the Christ that I profess to believe, then why don't you contact us again? We'll pray together and study the Word of God, Even maybe even send a prophet your way to help you understand which way you should be going. And then one more thing. Maybe God is calling you. God has given you a gift and you realize that gift is in you and you want to mature and develop that gift so it can be used so that Jesus Christ's church can grow. Well, then let's talk too. Let's study the Word of God together and study how to communicate the Word of God more effectively so that Jesus Christ Church will grow and we will all receive a tremendous blessing from Jesus through each one of us. God bless.